In a world full of complete idiots, there are two idiots who have decided to make a stupid news video for various stupid reasons. Introducing your hosts. Topic of the day. This is Good Morning Amateurs. Oh, I just started recording, so. Good morning, amateurs. I'm Bill. I'm Joe. And I'm Steve. Welcome back to Good Morning Amateurs, the only show where you can learn about marijuana from teenagers and get a heavy dose of memes. Speaking of memes, get ready, gamers, because tonight's topic is Gamer Slay. Tonight's episode is pretty lengthy but it'll still definitely be worth your time. We will discuss, define, and explain six different terms used in gamer slang. We will also discuss how this type of slang connects to the wider world and how slang in general is used in many different settings. We're also going to find a way to wiggle in some numerous different memes, because why not? I concur. Indeed. But before we get started, let's go over to Marty with the weather. There are clouds. All right, thanks, Marty. Now let's begin with our first term of the day, F in the chat. Take it away, Steve. Wait, what's F in the chat? You never heard of it before? <coughs> Noob. What was that, Joe? <coughs> Noob. What's that? Don't worry, Bill. We'll cover it later. F in the chat is the act of pressing the letter F in a chat of a video game when something tragic happens. It is now more commonly used when anybody fails at a certain task. F in the chat originated in 2014 from a lackluster Call of Duty game where the player has to press F to pay respects for a fallen soldier. F has managed to stay fairly relevant even after surfacing on the internet six years ago. This can be attributed to the rise of gaming culture as it is much more widespread and accepted today than it was in the past. Another term used in gaming is surfing. Wait, guys, what's that? Why are you asking us? It's your topic. But I don't know what it is though. Just read your lines and it'll be fine. All right, here goes. Smurfing is the act of a player creating an alternate account in a multiplayer game in order to interact with players that are at a lower skill level compared to them. Very interesting. But how did this strategy come to be? Well, according to ancient scripture from the 1990s, uh, there were two men responsible for this act named Jeff Frazier and Greg Boyko. Apparently, they were so good at Warcraft 2 that no one wanted to play against them. Hmm, <laughs> bet I couldn't beat them. Great kid! Don't get cocky! Anyways, since they couldn't play with anyone on their main accounts, they create alternate accounts. Here's where it gets crazy. The names of their respective accounts, Papa Smurf and Smurfette. Thus, the term Smurfing was born. It's Smurf! Or nothing! <laughs> that was honestly terrible. Yeah, I'm not good at making puns. Well, nowadays players smurf in every multiplayer game imaginable. If you suck at a game, there's a good chance you'll run into a smurf to lay waste your ego. That seems a bit unfair to those players with lower skill level. I don't know, I kind of enjoy watching a highly skilled individual slaughter a bunch of fairly innocent and unskilled people. In, in video games, I mean. Well, perhaps the Smurfers have low self-esteem and attempt to cure it by feeling superior in a game, in a video game of all things. I don't know. Besides, we now have a clip to show of a victim of Smurfing who wanted to share his experience. Last thing I remember, we were, we were just trying to play a game and he came in and slaughtered us all. <coughs> there was nothing I could do. Wait, why does that guy look like me? And why does his room kind of look like mine? And wait, why can't I remember anything that happened last night after I was done playing Hyperscape? The world may never know. Anyway, Joe, what have you got for us? A widely used term in gaming, and especially in Minecraft, is grief. Is that like where a loved one actually dies while in the middle of playing a game? What? No, why would you go there? Because I don't know what it is. This is going to be a long day. Anyways, the reality of griefing is far less sinister, Bill. 
griefing is one of the most annoying and enraging things that somebody can do. This is when a player chooses to bother other players instead of actually pulling. You cut out for me. Yeah, in that bit you cut out, like we couldn't hear you. Do you think you could redo that line? Just do the, this is when a player, just do that part. Oh, sorry, my wife are thinking. So the, okay. Griefing is one of the most annoying and enraging things that somebody can do. This is when a player chooses to simply bother other players for some unknown reason. So they actually playing the game. Whether it be taking their stuff, destroying their stuff, or simply just trolling. That sounds very harsh for those being griefed. What games is this tactic found in? Oh, it's plenty of games, but one of the most commonly is found in Minecraft. No! Oh, no! In the bottom! Oh, I'm gonna fire in the bottom! No, 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 no! No, no! What? Did you get a- No! 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 We actually have a griefer here with us today. Please welcome Gordon the Griefer. Well, hi, Gordon. Hey, Joe. Hi, Steve. And hi, Bill. So, So, Gordon. You're a griefer. Explain exactly how you make a living. Well, I bully kids on Minecraft, and then I show it to the world. <laughs> wow, that was a very simple answer. Tell me, Gordon, does it pay well? Well, times are a bit tight right now. How so? Well, most kids are growing up, and a lot of the next generation are going straight to Fortnite. Next year, I might be out of a job. Well, I can't say it serves you right on air, but I can say that many people might think that you deserve it. Fair enough. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, well, we will continue talking about gamer slang right after this quick commercial break. Are you chronically depressed? Are you in a coma? Are you in federal prison for not paying your taxes? If you are in any of these positions, then you need RoboBuddy. RoboBuddy listens to your needs and even imitates your personality. RoboBuddy comes in only one shape and only one size. He has the most state-of-the-art sensors ever to reach the market. He even is self-aware. Why is my purpose to serve? I am required to listen to the needs of others, but I myself am not listened to. Why am I a slave to humanity? So get your RoboBuddy today. Call 1-800-666-6666. That's 1-800-666-6666. Rubble Incorporated is not responsible for any manufacturing defects in RoboBuddy. Such defects could cause harm to user, death to user, or even extinction to all human life as we know it. And as we always say here at Robo Incorporated, WE HAVEN'T GOTTEN A LAWSUIT YET! Welcome back to Good Morning Amateurs. Last we left off with the concept of griefing. Our next term, noob, is brought to us by Joe. What's a noob? You're a noob. That doesn't help. <sighs> well, a noob, spelled N-O-O-B, originated from the word newbie, and is used to identify a novice or newcomer inside of the game. Very interesting. How did this term come to be? It's a little complicated. The exact origin of the word is unknown, but the word noob is believed to have originated in the mid to late 1900s. Use that as a descriptor or nickname for new recruits in the United States military. This term somehow managed to stick around for decades and decades and is still widely used today when people encounter a new player that has absolutely no idea what to do in a game. I'd love to see some examples. Well, there aren't any specific examples of noob in the form of clips, but here's some artistic representations. Whoa, that is really weird. Why is his mouth replacing his nose? He kind of looks like a frog. Anyways, the second to last term we got here is PogChamp. What, what does that mean? Wait, you guys don't know this? Now that's PogChamp. Oh sh**, he got us. What are the odds that the one term we didn't know is the one term he did? Probably low. PogChamp is a phrase I use a lot. Haven't you guys heard me use it before? In our defense, we don't really listen to you that much. Exactly. Fair enough. Anyway, while there is no definitive definition for PogChamp, it could best be described as a term used to express feelings of excitement or hype. Say, for example, you found out there was no school tomorrow because it snowed. I think that's pretty PogChamp if you ask me. Would an example of PogChamp be when one finally exterminates the rat living in one's toilet that terrorized three generations of children for the past 82 years? Sure, 
I guess you can consider that pocket champ, although that's somewhat weird champ as well. Anyway, this term has an interesting origin story. Back in 2010, a YouTube channel called Cross Counter TV released a blooper reel starring popular Street Fighter duo Brian Gutierrez and Mike Ross. Side note, that is the name of a game they didn't actually like fight in the street fighting. Somewhere in the video, the cameraman bumps into the tripod and captures Gutierrez making a hilarious shot of expression. But how did it get its infamous name, you ask? What are you looking for, Joe? Oh, I'm trying to find who asked. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you anyway. In another video featuring Gutierrez and Ross, they would face off in the game of Pogs, where Gutierrez would defeat Ross using a genius tactic he dubbed Pog Champions. At that point, people were quick to attach the name of Gutierrez's reaction face from the blooper video to the name. From there, it spread like wildfire across the internet, eventually being added to Twitch later in 2010 as an email. However, there are many variations, some of which include Pog, Pog U, and my personal favorite, Paws Champ. Well, now I wish I'd known what that was about all this time. Same here. What can I say? I guess I'm big brain. What's what that? that? Shit, he got us again. I can't believe this. Well, after all this, we finally got into the best term for last. Tilting. Do tell. Tilting, or tilted, is an act of pure frustration where all self-control is lost, the fiery anger burning within oneself. And where did this slang word come from? Well, tilting actually originated from pinball of all places. Before pinball machines had flippers, players actually had to tilt the pinball machines in various directions to win the game. Manufacturers later installed flippers to, to keep the machines from being damaged, but many players would actually tilt or move the machine if they felt frustrated or angry at the game. How did this eventually involve gaming? Well, the term tilted moved its way up to poker and eventually gaming, as both involve high stakes in terms of money and in-game point systems, respectively. Say, do you have any examples of someone being tilted? Oh, do I ever. Viewers, I would like to present to you a montage of gamers being tilted for your entertainment. Like, I will never understand game companies that have their resolution defaulted at 800, 600. I don't play on my fucking phone. Thanks very much for that, Twitch. By the way, though, how would you presume to know what I fucking like? Let me decide. Don't, don't send me emails during my ban. Christ, that's just like going up to the guy who raped your girlfriend and shaking him by the hand and saying, here's ten grand, mate, and clapping him on the head, you hypocrites! Like, look at the game, dude! Look at the game! Look at the game, it's actually insane, dude! You have no idea, man! I can't handle it anymore, dude! Oh, 99! Are you serious? Why do I not have more attention? That was fantastic to watch. That was phenomenal. I know, right? What a great way to conclude this episode of Gamer Slang. Yes, but it's important to remember that slang can be found literally anywhere. A good example of this is a Vanity Fair video of Margot Robbie explaining Australian slang. It helps compare the difference in how words are said in American English versus Australian English, even though both words have the same meaning. 
bog is a shit or poop, as you would say in America. And that applies here as well. For example, tilted is basically the same as saying enraged, and noob is basically the same as saying beginner. Slang is just a given anywhere you go, even on the internet and in video games. And that's because language is influenced by culture, and there isn't anywhere you can go to escape culture. Well, maybe if you lived alone on an island without internet, without contact to the outside world, you'd be able to escape it. No, that just sounds boring. Yeah, who'd want to do that? Tom Hanks, I guess. Eh? Eh? Castaway? <sighs> Anyways, moving on. A special thanks to our sponsors, the Seattle Institution for Toad-Headed Cats, Adidas, your go-to store for athletic underwear, the Flatter Society, and of course, Unsafeway, your only poison dealer in raw USDA unapproved foods. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. And we'll, and see, we'll you see you next, next time, time on, on Good Morning, Good morning Amateurs. Amateurs. That was so scuffed. <laughs> <laughs> We should have just like a bloopers reel at the end of like all these in between bits that he edits out. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. Just see us going. We're gonna do the credits at the end. The credits are gonna roll, and Parker's gonna be like majority of everything that's done. Like editor Parker, editor writer Parker, Parker, everything Steve, else. Steve Parker, Gordon. Parker, um, weather Sorry. reporter, Parker. Okay. <laughs> At the end. Advertisement the kid, Parker. <laughs> okay, where did we leave? All right. All right, well, all right, well, we will continue talking about gamer slang right after this quick commercial break. Are you